Hi guys, Mary Beth Temple here from the YouTube channel Hooked for Life with Mary Beth Temple. Recently I was on Hochanta TV in the UK and I was selling some fabulous yarn. Now this is from Macaroni Yarns in Turkey and it is 100% cotton. It comes on these nice heavy cones and um, it's an interesting ply. Let's see how I close I can get without it getting blurry. It is not loose plied like dishcloth cotton, but it is not tightly chainette plied. It's sort of a loose chainette ply, but it is 100% cotton. I would say it's a worsted weight or maybe an Aran. And I had it for sale on Hochanda TV. It still is. I'll see if I can get a link in here. And um, we had two colors. So it came in white and peach or white and lemon yellow or white and mint. And when you get the yarn in the mail, you get a crochet market bag pattern, but I wanted to have something for the knitters as well. So this is just a, a little cotton hand towel and the stitch, I've heard it called the beehive stitch or the two color beehive stitch or the double beehive stitch. Um, I always think calling stitches by a name are silly because what if other people call it something else? But this is a very simple stitch to make. The only little tricky part is the knit one below. So let's see if you can see how thick and dense this is, almost like a thermal weave, and it looks stripey on the back. So let's take a real quick look. Again, the pattern is gonna be on the blog, probably as soon as I post this video, which is hookedforlifepublishing.com slash blog and I am as I so often am using my Denise interchangeable knitting needles these are the ones with the long tips but these are a size 6 US 6 which is let me think a US 6 is how many millimeters I'll have to think about that and get back to you so it is a two color stitch and I am on the part where I'm going to incorporate my B color which is the white in the pattern the A color is the color so I have dropped my peach I have picked up my white um, as we often do with intarsia you want to make sure that the floats are even all the way across so I always pick up my new color under the old color and then I'm going to go knit one below knit one all the way across to the last four stitches then there's a knit one below and then I'm going to change to the bobbin of the A color and knit those last three stitches. So let's take a closer look. So instead of knitting in the stitch that I would normally knit, I'm knitting in the stitch below. But I want you to see that that's, I'm sort of going through the stitch that's on the needle as well. So when I push it off, there are two loops. Do you see the two loops? So knit one, knit one below. It sounds harder than it is. You really get into a pretty instinctual rhythm with it, but you just wanna make sure you're going under the stitch below. Let's do a slow one again. So there's the stitch. That would be the next stitch to knit in, but I'm going in the stitch below. There are 41 stitches cast on. This towel is about 12 inches wide. All right, and now I have to cheat and see how many 12 inches is in centimeters because I have been traveling quite a bit recently and my brain is rot. That's about 30 centimeters. Let's see, that was a knit one below, so that was a knit one, so we're gonna knit one below one I'm just making a tragedy of unwinding this yarn today so the first thing I did before I cast this on I wound off about 12 to 15 meters or yards of the a color to use as a bobbin and the reason I want that bobbin is because my towel begins and ends with three stitches in the a color and I want to make sure that I don't have to have a big ugly float going across. So we're almost there. Now I've managed to get my yarn tangled on the camera stand. I swear to Pete, you guys, there are days that I should not be allowed near the video camera. This is definitely one of them. 
So here we are coming up to the end. Remember I said until four stitches were left, one, two, three, four, knit one below with the B color. I'm going to drop the B color. I'm going to pick up the A color. And remember that's a bobbin. You can't see it because it's kind of hanging down below. So I'm going to pick up the new color under the old color. One, two, three. And that's what that looks like. Now going back in the other direction, I'm going to knit my three with the bobbin. One, two, three. Once again, new color, which is the B color, which is the white under the old color. And on this second row, I'm going to knit across. So I'm going to knit all the white stitches in white, when I get to the end of the row, I'm going to go back to the B color and knit those last three stitches. Now, we have a stagger. So on the knit one below rows, the right side rows that began with the white, we started with a knit one below and then went knit one, knit one below all the way across. When we are using the A color, we are starting that center section with a knit one. So you want to stagger the knit one below so they don't line up all on top of each other. And again, this makes a great texture for however big you want to make it. I like the towel because I, of course, want to use up some of the yarn. I want some a project that uses a lot of the yarn that is in the kit. But um, you could make a, a couple of washcloths or dishcloths. You could make a couple of small makeup removers little scrubbies, but I like this stitch for this use because it has a lot of texture. So you can use it both to get crud off your dishes or makeup off your face. It's sort of exfoliating. Okay, so we're coming up to the end of the row. Now on this side, you do not have the bobbin. I am using the, the main skein. So we're coming up here bring my yarn to the back of the work because that's where all my floats want to happen. Pick up the new color under the old color, knit three. So this working yarn is attached to the main skein. All right, just a little bit of the next row. I know nobody likes long, tedious videos, but I want to just do the very beginning. Now, if you look at this, it looks like just a garter stitch ridge. It's okay if it looks like that. You're not going to get these cool little bumps until you start those knit one belows. So I'm going to go one, two, three, because that's my garter stitch border. And now the center section, I'm going to just leave that white yarn hanging because I don't need it. Knit one, knit one below, knit one, knit one below, and I'm going to work until I get to the end. Now, my own personal preference, and this is not a deal breaker, but it is my preference. When I get to the last three stitches, uh, that border on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and I'm still going to use the bobbin. And the reason I'm going to do that, instead of just continuing on with the main skein, because it's the same color, you know, why would I change? Uh, but the reason I change is to keep the floats on the back the same size. If you change to the bobbin every single time you're getting ready to do that border or after you finish that border, then it keeps the floats on that side of the work the same height as the floats on the other side of the work. So we're almost coming up. As you can see, this goes really quickly. I also want to address gauge. Gauge is not enormously critical, but one thing about doing towels or washcloths or dishcloths in 100% cotton is cotton tends to grow a little bit when it's wet. And because of that, I like to go with a tight gauge because I don't want it to hit the water and turn into lace. <laughs> that is not what we're after. So let's just, I might as well just keep going to the end of the row. So I have four stitches left. 
one is going to be a knit one, then I'm going to knit three, but once again, just to keep the floats short, I'm going to drop the old color and pick up the new color underneath. One, two, three, and then do the same thing going back. I'll knit three off the bobbin, and then I will switch back to the main skein. Let's take a brief look at the back. <clears throat> There's my floats on what is the right-hand side of the back of the work. There's my floats on the left-hand side of the back of the work. Again, if I did not switch before that bobbin, then the A floats would be longer. They'd be going up instead of two rows, they'd be going up four rows. And I just don't like the look of it and I think it's gonna catch. So that's all there is to it, to this beehive two color towel in macaroni yarns, cotton macrame, and available on Hochanta TV. Please check us out at hookedforlifepublishing.com slash blog on Hochanta TV. And here, on YouTube at Hooked for Life with Mary Beth Temple. And please consider giving us a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe, a comment, whatever floats your boat for wonderful new content coming whenever I have five minutes <laughs> knitting, crocheting, and other kinds of cool crafty stuff. Thanks for joining us.